between the Creator and the creation, and they took interceders, intercessors with Allah, just in the same way as intercessors are taken with the kings of this world and the, the leaders. So then, so now we've established the difference between the intercession as it relates between the people, which was the first thing that the Sheikh spoke about, and intercession as it relates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know the action of these mushrikun. So as it relates to this type of intercession, then in the Quran we find that the intercession is of two types. One which is negated, Allah negates that intercession and declares it to be false. And the second type of intercession which is affirmed. Which is affirmed. As for the first, the intercession which is negated, then this is the intercession which is requested from other than Allah. Which is requested from other than Allah. This is one this is one feature of the intercession which is negated. Someone requests intercession from other than Allah. The reason is because a shafa'a belongs solely to Allah. A shafa'a belongs only to Allah. Allah Allah owns it. Allah Allah possesses it. And so therefore it is not to be sought from anyone besides him. Not to be sought from anyone besides him. This is one aspect of the type of intercession which is prohibited. So meaning it's not permissible for anyone to ask for intercession from anyone. Rather we ask Allah for to, you know, to grant us intercession and to grant us the intercession of those who are allowed to intercede. A second aspect of the intercession which is negated by Allah is interceding for someone interceding for someone for whom that intercession will not be accepted. For whom Allah will not accept that intercession. And this is of course the kafir and the mushrik. The kafir and the mushrik. The intercession will not be accepted for such people. So to intercede for the likes of such people is, is again a characteristic of the type of shifa which is negated in the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, مَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ حَمِيمٍ وَلَا شَفِيعٍ There is no close intimate friendship, friend, or nor any interceder or intercessor for the wrongdoers. And Allah says, وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا لَا تَجْزِي نَفْسٌ, لا تجزي نفس عن نفس شيئا ولا يقبل منها شفاعة ولا يؤخذ. And have fear of the fear of the day in which one soul will not avail another soul of anything, and nor will it be accept nor will any intercession be accepted from it. So this shows um, this shows that there's a type of intercession spoken of in the Quran which is negated, and it is that which 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 basically has any of these two characteristics. That basically it's made without permission, it's sought without permission, or it asked without, without, sorry, it's sought from other than Allah, intercession cannot be sought from other than Allah, and, or, it's sought for someone with whom Allah is not pleased with, with whom Allah will not accept, and this is the kafir and the mushrik. As for the intercession which is affirmed, then this intercession is the one which uh, has two conditions fulfilled. The first one is, that it's actually sought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin with. It's actually sought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, that it is in relation to someone for whom that intercession will in fact be accepted. And this of course is none other than, than the mu'min muwahid. The believer, the person upon tawheed, the believer. Who has with him some affairs of sin? He has some affairs of disobedience which are obviously lesser than the level of shirk. So with respect to such a person, then intercession will be accepted for him by Allah's permission. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, مَنْ ذَلَّذِي أَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ Who is there who will intercede? Who is there who can intercede with him? Except by his permission. There's the first condition. In this ayah is the first condition. That it is only sought from Allah. It only sought from Allah. Second condition is found in another verse. وَلَا يَشْفَعُونَ إِلَّا لِمَنْ يَرْتَدَى إِلَّا لِمَنْ يَرْتَدَى And they do, not, they, they do not intercede except for the one with whom he is pleased. Meaning the one with whom Allah is pleased. And that is no other than the people of Iman, the people of Tawheed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
So there's the two conditions, and then we can find the two conditions in another set of verses. Allah says in another ayah, وَكَمْ مِنْ مَلَكٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ لَا تُغْنِي شِفَاعَتُهُمْ شَيْئًا إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ يَعْذَنَ اللَّهِ There are many angels in the heavens who, whose intercession will avail nothing except after Allah has granted permission. Well, so there's the first condition that Allah, only Allah is asked and Allah, Allah grants permission. And the second, well, immediately after this verse, it continues, وَيَرْضَى إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ يَعْذَنَ اللَّهِ وَيَرْضَى Except after Allah has granted permission and is pleased. وَيَرْضَى So meaning that Allah is pleased with the one for whom the intercession is made. So again, we see the, two, the same two conditions established in another, in another set of verses. So this then is the affirmed intercession. So we can see clearly that in the Qur'an, intercession in its entirety is not negated. And nor is it in its entirety affirmed. Rather there is one type of intercession which if it has certain features it will be rejected and another type which if it fulfills certain conditions it will be accepted. And we can clearly see that from what has proceeded. As for the shifa'a, so this, this clearly then is the established shifa'a which is affirmed. And when we look in the Quran and the Sunnah we find that this type of shifa'a is of six types. There are six types of this particular shafa'a. And the Shaykh goes on to explain the, the, the all six. As for the first, it is called a shafa'atul uzma, a shafa'atul uzma, which is the greatest or the greater intercession. And this is, this is in fact, al maqamul mahmud, this is the lofty position and status that will be granted to the Messenger. And this is as it relates to the people who are waiting on the plains of the Day of Judgment, waiting for the judgment to begin. And what will happen is um, they will um, seek this intercession, hoping for this terror to be removed, and you know this this, this waiting to be removed, and for them you know. And so the, so they will initially go to Adam al Islam, and then to various other prophets. One by one, they will go to the prophets. And all of these prophets will excuse themselves up until they come to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he will say, "Ana laha, ana laha," meaning that I, it, it is for me, it is for me, meaning this intercession. Then the messenger, alaihi salatu salam, he will uh, prostrate, worshiping Allah between, in, you know, in front of Allah the Mighty Majestic, and Allah will inspire and teach him, Allah will inspire to him certain types of praises, and you know, he will, he will. Remain in that way, and Allah will, uh, Allah will inspire him with certain praises, and the messenger will remain in that way, prostrating up until Allah says, "O oh Muhammad, raise your head, ask, and you shall be given. Intercede, and your intercession will be accepted." And this is, if you look, this this is, if you look at this action, if you look in in, in this hadith, you can see how the Prophet Ali Sallam. He didn't actually intercede before actually being given permission. He never even raised the issue of intercession. Rather, he just worshipped Allah and praised Allah. And he was granted the, the permission to make intercession. Right? So he only interceded after being granted permission. He never made the permission first. So that's one, one of the points that you need to understand from this hadith. That even the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't initiate intercession. Rather, he only did it un, until after he was given permission. Right, so that's an important benefit from this from this hadith. After he was prostrating to Allah and so on and so forth. And then it was said to him, uh, intercede and your intercession will be accepted. So then he interceded. Then he intercedes for the people who are standing there. And then their, their reckoning will begin. And then, uh, they will obviously, the people will then depart from that place either to paradise or to hellfire. So this is what is called a shifa'atul ulma and it is also al maqamul mahmud the lofty position as it relates to the messenger ali sallam this is something allah mentioned mentioned in the quran asa an yab'athaka rabbuka maqaman maqaman mahmuda that perhaps your lord will raise you upon a lofty position or a lofty status and um, this is because as the sheikh says uh, the the, the 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 as the sheikh says that 
all of the people from the first to the last that they will praise him, meaning the 